because they do have grapes on them. So you might wonder why we pull them off. Well, this sucks. Hopefully I didn't hurt it too much. We'll find out. This is frustrating, but it's okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California. This channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. If you guys saw my video yesterday, I gave a pretty lengthy chicken update. So I thought we would skip that this morning and just head straight to the farm. So I just got out to the vineyard. It is a beautiful day today. It's a bit windy, but pretty nice weather. And I am going to finish flushing my irrigation lines. This is something I do once a year when I turn on the irrigation for the very first time um, each year. And it's just to kind of get all the dirt and stuff out of the lines to help them not get clogged. And it also normally can show me if I have any breaks in my lines or if there's a line not working. So we're gonna be doing that this morning. I might go through and try to pull some boxes off and maybe some suckers, we'll see where I get. And then tonight, I am going to be doing my very first sulfur dusting in the vineyard. Hopefully everything goes well. I am absolutely blown away by the growth that has happened in such a short period of time. You guys are probably gonna hear me say this constantly over the next few months because I feel like a week ago they were nothing and now, I mean, look at the grapes. Look at the grapes growing. And look at this one, you know, that's six inches there. But this, these need to all come off. I need to figure out exactly when we might have a crew come through and do that because the point of taking these off, because they do have grapes on them. So you might wonder why we pull them off. Well, we really want the vine to focus its energy on the top canopy because this is gonna grow, it's gonna get heavy. We've got our top catch wire now, so it's gonna go up and over, and we just want the energy to stay focused here. So if we have grapes growing on the side, they might not do as well, and it's kind of just wasted energy for the vine. So we've gotta get all these guys off, slowly but surely. If you leave all these on, because it'll be putting so much energy into the bottom as well, you won't get as good of a crop. The grapes on the top of the canopy can suffer. So just gotta keep all that energy. Look at, I am in the shade of my vine right now. And it's just gonna keep getting bigger. All right, I could do this all day. I better get over to the irrigation. Okay, I am going to turn my panel on. I did everything yesterday that I needed to do, grease and oil the pump. So we're gonna turn this on manually here. I should hear the river pump click on, and then there's a little lull, and then my pump here to go into my drip line should turn on. So we're just gonna do manual. Just heard the river pump. So now in a few seconds, we should hear that. Okay, I can hear air coming out of the little vent up there. Starting to hear water in my filters. There we go. <laughs> That's just like a flushing system. That's the danger zone. You never wanna be standing on that side. All right. Everything's on, so I'm gonna head out to the field and we're gonna start flushing the rest of the drip line. I explained some irrigation stuff in more length yesterday, so I'll put a link above if you wanna check that out. In case you watched yesterday's video, I don't wanna to be too repetitive, but if you didn't watch it, I'll just show you really quick what we're gonna do. Here is my drip line. They have these little ends right here that I just open like that. You can see the water is brown. It takes a few seconds 
but it actually almost gets completely clear. So I go down, I open maybe 20 or 30, and then I walk back and I close them all and they're clear because they flushed everything out. The other thing is if I turn one on and no water comes out, that means I probably have a break in my line or some kind of issue, which is very nice to know because otherwise I'm probably flooding out my row. So that's what we're gonna do. That's just a quick description. And I'll show you just since we've been talking, the water has really cleared up. It's not completely there yet, but it's a lot better. So you can see how much it's changed already just in those few seconds. All right, let's get started. I also recently numbered the end of my rows like this, which really helps because you probably can't see it, but there's a leak right there. So I can put that that's row 34 and I actually noticed there's a leak right there. You might be able to see that one. That one's a little bit more obvious. So row 34 and 36. I'm gonna go grab some stuff. Okay, I don't have the Kubota right now, so I'm gonna get a little bit of exercise. But all I use is these cutters, which are actually my dad's. I need to get a pair for myself, Cobalt brand. I like them better than scissors because they just make like a really clean, straight cut. And then I've got these little guys, and I'll show you they just stick perfectly in the drip line and they screw on and they fix it. But before I go cutting the line, I have to walk out to the middle where the valve is and shut that line off. So that's what I'm doing first. Holy smokes. Well, that's not good. Nope. Luckily, it's as easy as this. And that shuts the water off to this drip line. But you can see just that little, little cut there, how much water, look, it's even getting over to the next row. I mean, it would just flood this guy out. So it's already pretty muddy and it has not been on that long. Let's see, okay. I know exactly what happened here. A pruner clipped it. Totally happens. Obviously it was an accident, but you can see it was right next to where they probably pr pruned. They clipped it, that caused a cut. We even see them chewed up over here from coyotes. That's more annoying. This was an obvious accident. All right, let's fix it. All right. So, I like to have a pretty clean cut. Plus this, this takes up a good spot and I don't want there to be too much extra. And if the cut is not straight, it won't really hook good. Oh, man. Oh, a dropper is right there. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. Seems I'm gonna have to cut a dropper off. So that's doesn't often happen but so anyways I just put that end in the hose I have to cut this dropper off which is a bummer because I can't shove the thing in with it Look how much it already started washing out here. See, all that's washed out. But there we go, fixed. It doesn't happen too often, but this is why flushing the irrigation lines at the beginning, whew, at the beginning of the year is worth it because you'll catch things like this.
All right, got enough bags for 25 acres. See how it goes. All right, I just got out to the field. So I got my tractor, the duster. I've got the sulfur dust. Because this is the first time, I'm just gonna do one bag at a time. So one bag of sulfur dust should cover roughly three and a half acres. I have this spreadsheet that tells me how many rows is how many acres. That helps a ton. Also another good reason why I painted numbers on the end rows. So we're just gonna start with one bag and hopefully it roughly covers three and a half acres. And then after that, I'm not sure exactly how many bags will go in the duster, but I'll fill it up and we'll get moving. So you often hear me say my mentor. Well, his name is Matt and Mike and Richard. I've got a lot of mentors and I'm very thankful for all of them. Matt told me the sulfur will burn my eyes. So I got these really sweet goggles from my husband and I'm gonna wear them because I have sensitive eyes as is and I'm not gonna take any chances. I think I can pull them off. So if I go by what my phone says, I should roughly make it to row 19. All right, let's put a bag in and see where we get. It's gonna be dusty. It's gonna be dusty dusting. <laughs> All right, bag one, let's do it. Come on, how cute am I right now? sulfur dust on it burns it and back to the drawing board okay oh, just filled up the hopper oh. okay try this again just filled up the hopper one bag It'll probably hold four, I think, but I think one bag at a time is good right now. So I think one bag for the long rows should make it about five passes. <laughs> Let's hope. Let's hope it works this time. So turn the hydraulics on first, which is the mixer. Looks like it's working. 15. Alrighty. Let's do this.
a lot. I don't want to go another. Than before, but not perfect. There's little doors back there. I closed them a little bit so to let let less dust out. driveline ladies and gentlemen so things are going great this should be here yay let me remind you I am borrowing this from someone well it is 6 15 I got a whopping hour of dusting in got nothing calibrated and broke the drive line. Oh boy. So I don't know what's going to happen. I let Matt know. I think worse things could happen, right? Worse things could happen. I'll just have to get a new drive line and replace it. It's just dusting is a little time sensitive. Farming. Farming. It's so fun. Well, that did not even remotely go as planned. But that's just farming. So my plan tomorrow is going to be to go get parts. Try to figure out what's going on with my hydraulics because I think that's part of the problem. I'm mixing it too fast and yeah, I'll explain it more tomorrow. But the next thing is going to be to fix the drive shaft and it is... Tuesday and I have to have this dusted by the end of the week. So if I can't get it fixed and calibrated, I'm going to have to pay for someone to do it. Boo. All right. Well, you're not going to want to miss the next episodes, <laughs> the next videos, because you're going to want to find out if I did it myself, right? So remember to hit that subscribe button. And even though I kind of had a bad day, hit a thumbs up. It'll make me feel better. I will catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.